Hey guys, Matt here from Fabbot, and I'm here today to tell you about an exciting new adapter that we've been working on for you Atlas 4200 guys. Alright, so the first thing you guys are probably thinking is, great, another 4200 adapter that converts the bell housing to be a small block shiny bell housing. This is a little bit more than that. See, this adapter is actually a part of a family of adapters that we started with our Honda K-Series, where we adapted the Honda K-Series to be dimensionally identical to an LS. Now what this did was it, it, didn't, it allowed for a multitude of, of applications to be used behind the K-Series. Because instead of adapting one transmission to one engine, we adapted an engine to be a different engine that already had every option under the sun. I mean, let's face it, at this point, an LS it's been putting planes, boats, every transmission option has been put behind it, it's endless. So if we can convert this engine, the Atlas 4200, to be an LS, your options are endless. So what does this mean for you exactly? Well, first off, it's cost effective. I mean, your flywheels, your flex wheels, your torque converters, it's, it's made in such volume for the LSs that now since you're using those parts, your parts are gonna be cheaper. And when you need to go replace them, let's say your, your flywheel. Uh, flywheels do wear out, especially if you're running ceramic disc, very hard, hard material. Uh, high coefficient of friction, large plate loads, you are going to wear into those flywheels and you're going to have to replace them. Flywheels for analysis are much cheaper than one-off custom flywheels that are made specifically for a 4200 to, to make the swap happen. Uh, let's, let's look at clutch options. This is one of my biggest favorite part about this adapter is finally for the 4200, you get to run an 11 or 12 inch clutch option. That means any LS clutch, 11 or 12 inches, and you can get in a single, twin, or triple from all your favorite brands that gives you great street ability, great drivability for, for the road, but also allows you to support over a thousand wheel horsepower without a problem. Best in class serviceability, hands down right here. All OEM parts, no custom parts. All only parts you're getting here are hard parts that just adapt from an OEM engine to an OEM part. Nothing to wear out here. And then after that, let's talk about the resale. It's not, trust me, I'm a car guy. I've built plenty of cars. I can tell you that I've put a, a manual or an automatic into a vehicle and I find myself the drag strip a lot or I found myself the road course and I want to switch. I want to take my car that I end up spending the whole summer at the drag strip and switch from a TR6060 over to a Turbo 400 or maybe with overdrive 4L80. Not a problem. Unbolt your kit here, the clutch, your flywheel, your transmission, sell it to an LS guy. Maybe he'll even have the transmission you want. You guys can do a swap. The point is you can take your transmission off sell it on Marketplace to some LS guy within a couple days and pick up another setup for your, for your engine easily because either you can find it on Marketplace ready to go or go to your favorite speed shops. You can go to Summit Racing or us if we have it and buy everything for that transmission to bolt to an LS and it will now bolt to your Atlas without a problem. So these are some of the high points, but let's get into the kit. Let's look and see exactly how we did this. All right, so to start off the kit, we're gonna start with the main adapter plate. This is pretty straightforward. It's an adapter plate goes on to the uh, bell housing. And this is what converts your bell housing to be an LS, uh, LS bolt pattern. If you notice here, it's only the upper half. Uh, we can get into more about that, but, prime, but basically we've had a lot of success with just running the upper half. If we go all the way around, it adds a lot of cost for only two bolts. And on our Honda kit, we originally started with a, with a full adapter and we, we switched over to this. And we've had no issues at all um, with, with hundreds of kits that we've sold. Um, and it, it really was able to allow us to cut cost down. Now, we're gonna get into this optional kit over here that completes the lower half. If you need to, say if you have an off-road application, you need to seal it up, or it just makes you feel good to have it all around. Whatever it is, we do have an option for you, but it's not necessary. So to keep costs down uh, for you guys that may be on a budget or just don't see the need in it, like me personally, um, we do offer um, it in just the upper half, which is, this is our base kit here. So after this, we go into a starter spacer. Pretty simple, it has a concentric ring to keep everything uh, nice and concentric. Um, hardware that goes with it. We even machine some special studs um, that go in and allows your starter uh, nuts and studs to bolt on nice and clean. The uh, hardware for the adapter obviously comes with. These are your bell housing bolts. Um, you, you get most of the bell housing bolts along with uh, two longer bolts. And that's because two of the bell housing bolts are actually go through the dowel. So this goes through the bell housing, through your adapter plate and actually bolts into the block. That's what these two long ones are for. These right here, this kit is a full cup kit. Again, this is, this is complete. We even include the ARP hardware, straight from ARP, to bolt the inner crank adapter, which we'll get to in a second, to your crank. Um, going to that, 
inner crank adapter. So this is where the magic happens. So when we set out to make this kit, you know, we set our KPCs, our, our key product characteristics to be that we want it to be a full LS kit. So this, adapt, this makes it completely into an LS. So we have all the, the functionality of an LS, the flexibility of an LS. But we also wanted to use the stock starter. And that's something we didn't do on the Honda motor. And we probably will go back and, and see if we can do that. But that's one of the things that gets me most excited about this. This kit allows you to fully bolt it up to the Atlas, make it an LS, and you still get to use your stock starter. That means if you're three states away on a drag and drive event or over in a different state, uh, drift event, and your starter goes out, go to O'Reilly's, get yourself a new starter. That goes for all the parts, clutches, flywheels, all OEM parts. And that's what we try to do here. We try to stick to OEM parts whenever we can. So ARP bolts, inner crank adapter, has the starter ring, uh, 13 and a half inch, 161.2 starter ring for the Atlas. Um, this is what your motor will use to start. The starter ring that'll go, be on your flywheel, you can take that off if you want, leave it, whatever you wanna do, but it will not be used. From there, we're gonna use our outer crank adapter. This has a concentric piloting feature that pilots onto the inner, bolts on using the supplied 10 millimeter bolts, 10 of them all around the side, probably overkill, in fact, I can guarantee it's overkill, but we wanna make sure this thing is not gonna give you any issues and be able to hold the horsepower that you guys are starting to make with these motors. We also added two tap holes on, bus, on the outside, so if you need to press it off later, you put the bolts that come out, put it in here, pop it off, good to go. Um, and of course you have the hardware. Now, like I said, over here, this is an optional kit. So this is our base kit. This is what will come uh, standard. If you want to add on the optional kit, this is to complete the lower half of the adapter. Not only is it complete the lower half, we want to make sure it seals up. We assume that a lot of you guys that are using this want to seal it up completely. Maybe it's an off-road application. We even install, we even include this stainless steel filler plate that fills the little bump out in the LS bell housing um, where, the, where the factory starter goes. All your hardware comes with it. And that pretty much sums it up. So right now what I wanna do is I actually wanna put this onto an engine. We're gonna do a full install video later, but right now I just kinda of wanna show you quickly how it goes onto the engine so that you see kind of how this kit works. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna install the bell housing adapter. That's what we have right here, pop it on your dowels. Grab a quick mount. And then simply put your bolts in place. For this, there's your five bolts. crank adapter. This is a precise fit too. Go on here. Give it a couple taps. And we're going to rotate it until your ARP hardware lines up. We'll go ahead and put these in. Of course, this is just a quick install video just to kind of show you how it all goes together. We'll do a more in-depth install video or we'll put the lubricant on the bolts and show you all the torque specs. But for right now, we just kind of want to show you how it looks like and how it all goes together. We need a 5 ace 12 point. All right. From there, we have your outer crank adapter. This pops on, line it up with our holes here, do like that, and we're going to toss our holes in. Again, precise fit, keeps everything concentric and centered. And we're using that same 8 mil that we used for the transmission adapter. Right, 
this point, this is an LS. Eventually, this is an LS. We have the bolt pattern, the distance from here, from the bell housing surface to here, all LS. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna install the starter. So we're gonna come around over here and I'm gonna show you how that goes. All right, so to install your starter, we're gonna start with the starter spacer. We're gonna pop that into the ring here. Then we're gonna take our studs with the hex that's cut into it facing outward. And we're gonna thread it all the way in until it stops. Then we take a quarter drive eight mil socket and just snug it up. From there, take your OEM starter and slide it into place. So from there you take the supplied 10 millimeter nuts. And then tighten it down. And there you go. Factory starter installed. All right, so here you have it. This Atlas 4200 has been completely converted over to be an LS dimensionally as far as the transmission is concerned. We have the bell housing converted, we have the crank converted, we have our pilot bore, both the small and large one that's, that if you're familiar with LSs, they have uh, the outer pilot diameter is the same, bolt pattern, the offset from where the, the crank's uh, flywheel sets up to where the bell housing sets up, exact same. And what's even great about this, ad this adapter, your stock Atlas starter, which means if you have a harness, that's a custom harness made for your Atlas, plugs right in. So here you go, fully adapted. The only thing we don't have on here is the lower kit. I'm gonna show you how that goes on quick, just so you can see what that looks like. So first thing you do, take the lower adapter, grab the two supplied 10 millimeter socket head cap screws, and we're just gonna slide the adapter into place. Put the first bolt in, thread it. Second bolt in, thread it. And we're gonna leave that loose right now. I'm gonna grab these two eight millimeter socket cap screws. Now, <laughs> this might seem a little strange to you why we did this, but um, as you know, on the oil pan, you have two 10 millimeter threaded bolt holes. Well, if we would have done a hole, a counter, a counter bore hole like we did here and threaded into that, we would have gone through this hole for your bell housing, which is the whole point of what we're trying to capture here. So what we did is we got an eight millimeter bolt from the back side, which fits well, and we threaded it. That way we're still capturing four points of contact and getting good clamp load across the entire plate, just like the bell housing was designed, but we still are giving you the bolt holes that we we're trying to capture. Now before we tighten that up, we're gonna go ahead and complete this kit. This is the level of detail that we were after with this kit. If we're gonna, if we're gonna seal up the lower half, we might as well seal it up completely. So we go over here with these tiny button head screws. Head and just screw that in. Two lower ones and one upper one. All laser cut from precision. That's 304 stainless steel. We're going to take our 8 millimeter socket. We're going to tighten the top two. And again, we're going to go over a full install video for torque specs and everything. Right now, I'm just showing you how it all goes together. You can see kind of how it works and what it looks like all fit together. Six millimeter on the back side, tighten up the eight mil bolts. There you go. And then a four millimeter. Of course, you probably want to use a hand suck, a ratchet for this. But I'm just gonna zip the quick, just so you can see. There you have it. This is the full kit. And of course, the lower kit comes with two more belt housing bolts to take advantage of the two holes that we put in the plate. All right, so here you have it. This is what the full kit looks like installed, fully converted to an LS. Now at this point, I'm sure there's a couple questions that I want to address that you have at this point. The primary one that we've gotten um, from the Honda guys, not so much, but I, I think we're gonna get a little bit more now that we've put a, a ring gear on the inner crank adapter, is what does the mass look like for the flywheel? So when we talk about mass uh, on a flywheel, what we're really concerned about is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia has two elements in the equation. One is mass, which is important. The other is the distance from the rotating assembly out to the, uh, how far the mass is located from the, from the rotating assembly. That, fun, that 
variable is actually squared. So the location of the mass is actually more important or has more, is more detrimental to moment inertia than the mass itself. If you notice here, the majority of our mass is within three inch uh, radially from the center axis. We do have you know, the sheet metal and the ring gear, there's just not much mass there. So I've done the moment of inertia calculations with different flywheels and different combinations to kind of see where this would line up for, for you guys. See so if something to compare to. Um, this with an LS1 flywheel, I'll say an O2 Camaro SS T56 LS1, Camaro SS from, for the 2002, um, your standard LS1 flywheel that allows you to still run 11, 12 inch clutch, but it's cost effective. You can go down to your local auto parts store, pick one up for 60, 70, 80 bucks. They weigh about 22 and a half pounds from the factory. Bolted onto here um, with this adapter, it would be equivalent to taking that same flywheel without the adapter, bolting it on, and it weighing about 26 pounds. They have the equivalent moment of inertia. And that's because if you were to just thicken the entire flywheel and make it 26 pounds, a lot of your mass would be outward more. Whereas with the crank adapter, we're more inward. So with a stock LS1 flywheel bolted to this crank adapter, if you want to think about it, it'd be like a 26 pound flywheel, uh, LS1 flywheel, cast iron, nodular iron flywheel from the factory. Now, if that's too much for you, of course, this is an LS1 now. We have endless options for flywheels, flex plates and everything else. Let's say you take a Fidanza, aluminum flywheel. That's a 12 and a half pound flywheel. If you were to bolt a Fidanza lightweight flywheel onto here, of course, a more expensive option, but bolted to this uh, steel adapter, your moment of inertia would be equivalent to that, that flywheel weighing about 16 pounds. So you have options. You have lots of options. That's one of the beauties of this adapter. Um, you have cost-effective solutions for flywheels. You also have lightweight solutions. It's up to you depending on what you're building. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Our phone number is 763-670-6941. We're here in Phoenix. We're open from 8 to 4, Monday through Friday. And if you want to email us, sales at fabbotfab.com. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.